this is the uh, February 18th uh, meeting of the Town of Futures Collaborative. And the first thing we do is go around the room and do introductions for, for a couple minutes, and then we start the, the rest of the agenda. Um, my name is Michael Nolte. I'm the uh, coordinator of the Town of Futures Collaborative. And uh, we've been, you, read, you can read the history of our organization on the back page of the agenda. Uh, and also the roles, which um, helps you understand what we do here. Um, okay, to my right, I guess. Uh, John Wilson. Betty Trainer, Friends of Bodecker Park. Vinny Story, Baymax, Bay Area Video Coalition. Susan Bryan, um, resident. Okay. I'm Katie Lamont, I'm with TNDC. What My name is Michael Sullivan. I'm with the Aesthetics. Okay, and? I'm Leah Robin and Sullivan, and I'm with the Aesthetics. Okay. I'm Alana Lopet, and then uh, working on the relationship of the website with the city and the central market and the CDs. Um, my name is Rasmo Martinez. Um, I'm a student in San Francisco State. David Villalobos. Caroline Smith. Sunny Simmons. Thank you. Newsom's time has 
has really um, pretty much included as a default um, an expectation that 20% of units in projects that they finance will serve formerly homeless. And they and we work very closely in partnership with two different city agencies, the Department of Public Health and the Human Services Agency to identify um, homeless um, individuals and families that are in touch with the city's services system and help connect them with the new housing opportunities that become available. Um, so as you, you know, we all live through this economic kind of meltdown of 2008, 2009, um, the city's redevelopment agency, the state abolished redevelopment, so a, a major source of financing um, for affordable housing went away. And so our project basically went on hold, was mothballed for a number of years while we were trying to figure out what we could build and how we would pay for it with such diminished funds. And the city's priorities, um, which I think we've all seen for the last number of years, really a lot of the city's resources have been going to try to address the problems with public housing in the southeast part of the city, doing really massive rebuilds of several large family housing developments, which you know is, I, I think, a great need and is probably an appropriate place for the city to prioritize, but it did leave um, projects like ours um, lower on their list of priorities. So a couple things have happened um, in the last year or two that brought this project back to a point of looking viable. Um, and the main one right now is that the state has a new funding program. It's called Affordable Housing Sustainable Communities. It's financed with cap and trade. If you guys um, might have heard some of this, there's a Basically, there's a new tax on polluters, so if you choose to reduce your emissions below a certain level, that's great. If you want to pollute above that level, you now have to pay a tax. And there's a variety of programs that are funded with these tax revenues and all intended in some way or another to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So affordable housing, um, because lower income people living in affordable housing tend to drive less and housing that's located at a very transit rich and walkable location like this, people are able to live there and do everything that they need in their lives without needing a car. Um, this is an eligible use for those funds. And so we are submitting an application for um, about $12 million of state funding to support this project this week. Um, there is also a lot of high-rise development, market rate high-rise development happening in the city. and. Um, you know, that's a very political, politicized subject. And as a result, some developers are choosing to pay higher than normal in lieu fees or make other kind of special arrangements. And so the city is expecting some um, significant revenues from that type of development source, which is another reason why this project is not looking financially feasible, where it did not look previously. Um, we downsized the project. Um, really mostly for financial feasibility. So we're now proposing um, eight stories and 103 units. And really the reason for the eight stories is um, there's a break in construction fire life safety requirements. So building at eight stories allows us to do it a little bit more cost effectively from a construction point of view and construction costs are very high right now. Um, when we had the project originally entitled, there was, it did cast a small shadow on Bodecker Park a couple of mornings a year, and we actually secured an allocation of shadow exemption. Um, but now with the smaller building, we're, we're refining, we're double checking that model, but our expectation is that we will cast no shadow on the park. So that's what they're about to go through that again. Yeah, yeah, that was a big um, consideration for us. Um, the other thing is when the project was originally conceived and entitled and we initially secured significant community support, we anticipated having a grocery store on the ground floor. Um, and, you know, we were hoping for, you know, a safe way or we knew it was going to be too small for like a food cove, like a fresh and easy, a, 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 a supermarket that's at a reasonable price point. We know that Bristol Farms is technically in the basement of the um, mall, but that's not a price point that's affordable for folks in this neighborhood. So we had a lot of conversations with various operators. Um, and fresh, we were actually close with Fresh and Easy, and then they actually ended up pulling out of this market, so it's actually probably good we didn't make a deal with them. But long story short is um, the, the city kind of was pushing on us a lot to kind of contain the project and really maximize its feasibility. And so uh, 
in, partly in response to their feedback, we've downsized the space to only 5,000 square feet. So there's no way at this point, we already knew, like Safeway needed like 20,000 square feet, we could only provide 12. Safeway would require parking, we couldn't provide any parking. We really looked at that, even if we wanted, we can't go underground to go above ground, it's very expensive. Um, so we're now looking at a market, something like there's one on um, Howard and Sixth, I think, or like if, if you go into the Mission, there's one on 18th and Mission, the Duke Long, I think it's called. I think what's most like, are, we still are committed to trying to locate an affordable priced food service in that corner location. Um, and we've, we're, we're kind of reaching out again to folks that we talked with earlier. Can, can I get to a point because we need Yeah, to sorry, questions. sorry, advisory committee on that. So I'm, I'm sorry to talk so long and not allow for questions. So I can take questions at this point. There's already at least two. Okay, yeah, I got it. Well, uh, I was interested in talking about the building. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it will age well. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, if, if I mean, gosh, uh, you know that guy, whoever it is that designed, Blue, uh, not Bloomingdale's, but the Nordstrom building where they they had it, and then they could put, they had to put like one little little one above a certain amount of. Stories. They put it back a little bit. It was. It's a very attractive oh, that front. Yeah. This. This looks like it's going to be instant. Um, you know. I mean. It, I mean. It's going to. Uh, it doesn't inspire any kind of. Uh, you know. Feeling like. Gee, I would like to live there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would? Well, um, what would you like to see? Um, well, um, I live across the street, and it's it's a little bit it's better, even though it's a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. You okay, know. So your question okay. is the design, okay? Because we need. Yeah. Okay. Question. And the other and thing is, the other time thing time is, have you that. talked to Rainbow Grocery? They ha they have a food co-op. Mm-hmm. Okay. You suggest talking to Rainbow Grocery? Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to second that comment. To this, uh, I appreciate all that you're doing and the new buildings going up at the Tenderloin, but some of the new buildings going up just don't blend in with the historic nature mm -hmm. of the rest of the beautiful buildings that we have that inspire us as residents who live here and work here. You know, there's a real feeling that we get from those beautiful buildings. And the new ones going up that I'm watching, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. please, uh, don't put down. these up anymore. They're just not, they just don't fit into the neighborhood. That's right. But thank you for what you're doing and providing housing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, especially since you have two facades and two different streets there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see more. Uh, any other questions? Did you have well, one? What about disabled family, uh, disabled people moving in there? Just families, huh? Because families, when the families come in, the tolerance level goes down. Well, well, why don't you let her, what's the we, breakdown? We do, yeah, yeah, so I can tell you. Um, How many disabled people? Well, just know? listen to the breakdown. Well, I can tell you there are going to be 15 studios, 10 one bedrooms, 63 two bedrooms, and 14 three bedrooms. So I use, um, and I actually appreciate the chance to clarify that. We, we tend to have to kind of put our ha housing in a certain bucket because of the way the funding is allocated, we have to label it family or senior, but you don't, certainly you don't have to have a family, and actually we follow the typical kind of two people per bedroom plus one. Well, disabled people usually only need a one bedroom. Right, right. so we will have a number <coughs> and of only studios 10 of and one bedrooms. There's um, very few, for, it's mainly, that's why it's for families, because it's two bedrooms, they have 63 of those. Right. 63 two bedrooms, we, and, we and disabled people don't normally rent two bedroom apartments. Right. And, and there's it's a high density of disabled people being displaced every day here, and we need places to put them. You know, families can go to Walnut everywhere. You know, families are welcome all okay. the time. Okay, is there a question? Sort of yeah, well, I just wondered, you know, like, how many disabled people could fit in there? I'm just curious, you know. Um, well, she pointed out what the, the makeup is. It's not a question like, how many disabled is. There's like, is like, is like, like 25 at the most. Are, are the, 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 the quarter, quarter, portion of the room will be disabled? Access. Yes, at least 10% of the units um, will be built out to be fully handicap accessible and now in our current building codes 
every unit will have to be adaptable. So, you know, if we need to lower kitchen cabinets, if we need to install grab bars, the mo those are the most typical accommodations that are requested. And they're we income can do those level. easily. Like, see, the disabled income level is a certain, um, they're, you're usually on Social Security. Right, so our, okay, okay, there's no there's no going back and forth because we have any other questions because okay. we have a, a schedule we're trying to keep up. All right. So we're already over time. Is there right. any, any other questions? I think uh, you can stick around to the end uh, sure. and people can come up to of afterwards. Course, of course. Sure. Right. So the next person we have is uh, item two is uh, um, glass, decks, glass, and window res restorative <coughs> engineer. Could you come to the front? Hello, my name is Michael Sullivan. I am um, the guy that you see uh, with the grinder grinding this um, the ugly uh, acid edge off the windows around town. And you may have seen me, have not seen me. Um, I am uh, doing this basically, you know, out of my own pocket right now and. Um, it's kind of a community service. Um, just uh, try to get it, you know, get some interest in it and get it kind of moving along. But um, today we're, uh, we you know, wanted to come down and give a kind of a presentation just to let some additional people know who we are and what we're doing. Um, we think that uh, what we're doing is uh, a significant contribution to the community because you know, we're here. And um, we would like to know if there's any questions anyone has. Um, if Go ahead. I have a question. Yeah, I mean, well, have you approached the CBD about funding? Who's the CBD? Community yeah. Benefit District. What's that? You've got to mention what it is. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, the Community Benefits District, because they, you know, they fund Clean City, and they're, they might be, you know, if you're providing, you sound like you're providing free right now. And no one's well, paying. I mean, people are paying for it, and we're just trying to make it um, a little bit more uh, equally. Uh, lucrative for ourselves rather than just, um, you know, dumping our money into it. So um, people are paying for it. Um, we're able to um, get probably an average about a 40% about a market rate uh, return on it. So we're not really, you know, up there yet. Um, we do want to work with the city and, and try to get a... You should really contact the North Market Community Development. They, they must have a phone number. Just look up North, the Tenderloin North Market CBD and contact them because okay. you should get on their agenda. I know they don't have a lot of money left right now, but still, you're doing what they do. Okay. Yeah. So I'm um, also I I also want to um, have, we'll let people know that um, if there's anyone anyone that'd like to help us in any way um, aside from funding and aside from um, giving us directions on on um, you know where to go and what to do, if there's anything anyone else would like to do. To help us, that would be uh, fantastic, and that's yeah, our main. Better you know. website. You want to help with the website? Well, I, I can't look at it. I, mean, I never, if I hadn't come to this meeting, I never would have heard of you. And uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. uh, I don't quite understand what you do. Yeah. yeah. All over town, you see this this white writing all over windows, yeah. and it's you can't take it off, you can't grind it off, or I mean, you can't really even grind it off, but. After you grind it up, you have to refinish the windows, and basically it's a labor-intensive process. It's expensive to have the equipment and to the training to do it, and it's, it takes a long time, and people don't want, want to do it. And, and they think that um, if once you do it, um, what, if they pay money to have it done, then what's keep, keep people from coming and just doing it again? Well, you know, basically I'm having to give people the assurance that if anyone comes to, to re-vandalize their windows after I get done refinishing them, that I'll just come back and do it for them for free if they're able to let us know immediately that it's that it's been re-vandalized. So the vandals don't get a chance to get their kicks out of seeing their, their, their work um, again. So, I mean, so far it's working. Um, none of the people whose windows I've restored have been re-vandalized. Um, we think that it's, uh, it's making it a, a strong contribution to the community and we'd like to actually do the entire city at some point with, um, with some help from the city. Anyway. I would encourage you just, why don't you work on the tender one first Get all of our windows. All one of the problems with the tenderloin here. One, 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 don't worry about the rest of the things. <laughs> one of the things that we have to worry about is is actually we decided that we weren't going to dig into any of our own funds for this anymore. We've already got about close to ten thousand dollars into this, and we're we just we're low income people. You know, we're just just like any of the people that are with have one foot in the, on the street here. You know, we're not. 
any big shots. Um, and we decided that we're not going to dig into any of our own money, that we're just going to use the funds that, we, that we're generating from it to sustain it. And